Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're continuing the solo progression series featuring my paladin. And in this episode we'll be focusing on leveling up to level 80 and then obtaining our first set of items which we will be using for a long time. So based off the title, you guys can see that I'll be going for the Afterland totems. To get these totems, you have to do a theme dungeon called the Afterlands and these are the only permanent totems that we can get in the early game. And I don't plan on grinding New Garden for its totems on this character later down the track, so I'll be using these for the rest of the time I play the character. We can access the Steam Dungeon at level 75, but I decided to level up to level 80 so then I could wear some better equipment to clear the dungeon a bit faster. So up to level 65, I chained on a map called Military Camp 1. To get here, you need to go to the map Excavation Intermission Site, and then go into the building on the bottom right of the map. From level 65 to 70, I trained at a map called Silent Swamp, which is a pretty popular training map. It's right next to Sleepywood, and I think most people train here up to level 77. But personally, I like to change the places that I train, so I only stayed here until level 70. So it's up to you if you want to stay here until level 77, but personally, I, I just trained it up to level 70 before moving on to the next map. If you're finding trouble finding a free Silent Swamp map, you can also go to the map one right of Silent Swamp. It has similar spawn and EXP rates, and it is almost always empty. From level 70 to 80, I trained in the Orbis map Stairway to the Sky 1. Even though that Silent Swap has better EXP rates, Stairway is still a pretty good map for EXP and training. But the main reason why I decided to train here until level 80 is because the monsters that spawn on this map, or the cats, they all drop level 80 equips. So I wanted to get the extra damage needed to clear the Afterlands dungeon a bit faster. Keep in mind for this map, there is a little cloud spring at the bottom and it can propel you to the top if your class doesn't have good vertical mobility. So now we're going to go into the main bulk of the episode, which is going to be more or less a walkthrough of the Afterlands. The Afterlands theme dungeon is also a decent amount of levels, so I'll be using this to train up to about level 90. If you guys don't want to do the Afterlands or you don't care for the totems, feel free to train at a map called Ice Valley to about level 85 to 86, whichever one you feel comfortable enough to go to Sahel 2, or Desert of Serenity to train up to level 100. Before starting the Afterlands, make sure you sell all your spare etc items because you're gonna need a fair amount of inventory space for this theme dungeon. I also recommend you guys get some pet food because your pet will probably get hungry during this dungeon. You can get to the Afterlands by accepting the quest in the light bulb on the left. It should be under level 75, the Afterlands. It will teleport you to a short cutscene, depending on where you are. I think there are three different cutscenes, so you can see for me, I had the barrel cutscene. And once you are done, it will teleport you to a giant door with a bunch of locks on it. The whole goal of the theme dungeon is to find the 12 keys for the locks on the door, and we won't be going back to this map until we get all 12 of the keys. To start off the quest line, you will have to go through a little bit of dialogue, and then you have to attack the bush in front of the door. You can just simply use your default control attack to get rid of the bush and we will start the theme dungeon at the Land of the Warriors. The Land of the Warriors starts off pretty straightforward. You gotta kill a bunch of the NPCs at the very beginning. It takes about four to five minutes depending on how much damage you can do. You can see it took me about four minutes to go through this cutscene and you do it a few times during this dungeon, which is the main time sink to be honest. And once you are done, you are prompted to turn the day to night and you will need to talk to a few of the NPCs around. Afterwards, they will prompt you to go to kill the Barog so you will need to go two maps to the right and you'll find a Barog with a key on it. You just kill it, pick up the key, and you can come back to the main area. You'll then have to turn the night back to day. And once you do that, you get an option of three different activities that you can do to pass the test effectively. I always recommend doing the top one, which is the same activity that you guys did when you first started the dungeon, which is just killing the NPCs. Because personally, I think that one's the fastest out of all of them. And it's the least frustrating because you won't need to jump around or move around too much. That's pretty much all that you need to do at the beginning in the Land of the Warriors. Once you've done this, it will teleport you to the next land, which is the Land of the Riches. And from here, you can just accept all the quests that you see. What I do recommend is for the first quest, you will have to gather a bunch of food baskets for the NPC. I decided to stay here and collect 230 of them because he does ask for food baskets multiple times during the quest. So just gathering them all early will save you a bit of time going back and forth between this map. The main reward for finishing Joel's quest is these little bits of gold. Make sure you don't use these by accident. You will need to gather a few of these during the quest line. The first one that you get will go to Mansa, and once you complete Mansa's quest, he will teleport you to the next world, which is the Land of Contemplation. 
Once you get to the land of contemplation, you'll get prompted with a bunch of dialogue and then it will tell you to go to the various maps to the right. So you end up going through the three maps on the right and at the very end it will prompt you with a new quest which will require you to kill about 50 ravens. Once you kill the 50 ravens and complete talking to the NPC, you'll be able to talk to Adler on the left side of the land of contemplation and just by talking to him he'll give you your first key. So I like to hold all 12 of the keys until I get all 12 of them to complete the dungeon, otherwise I might lose track of which ones I've completed. So I do recommend you guys holding onto all the keys in your inventory until the very end. From here you can talk to Akasha again and teleport to the next land, which is the land of innocence. We'll start off by completing Tina's quest, where she will prompt us to just collect a few things for her. Once we complete her quest, Billy will ask us for help as well by collecting some things. Once you go back to the first map though, you will notice that the tree is actually broken and you can actually click the tree stump which has been broken and get another key. Once both Billy and Tina's quests are complete, you'll be able to talk to the girl on the left near the swings called Lonnie. All you'll need to do to complete her quest is to have a magic eye patch. You would have picked one of these up from one of the previous maps if you have a pet on, otherwise they're very easy to get. After completing her quest, she'll give you a key. The next key is also super easy, you just need to talk to the silent boy on the right and just keep talking to him and he'll give you a key. Once that's done we can finally do Billy's quest, it's pretty straightforward, just need to collect a few of the drops that the first set of monsters drop. And once we finish this, we can go back to the land of the warriors. You'll be prompted to turn the day back to night and you will have a few quests that come up, one above your head and one from Volcanelli. Accept both of them, then move to the second map to the right to finish the quest that requires you to kill a bunch of monsters. Once that's done, you can turn the night back to day and then the NPCs will get really mad at you and then make you turn the day back to night. Once you turn it back to night, we can move back to the Land of the Riches. In the Land of the Riches, we have two things that we'll need to do to start off. The first thing is to get Joel to move out and the second thing is to get six of the yellow gold pieces that Joel gives us. So Joel has two sets of quests. The first one is called A Tasteful Favor. Every time that you complete this one, he will give you a gold piece. And we'll need to do this six times. The second set is his story quest where he will eventually move out of the castle walls. So keep doing these quests until you get him out of the castle walls and have six gold pieces. Eventually you'll be able to start Ben's quest, which is similar to Joel's, you just need to move him out of the castle. But all you need to do for this one is to actually just start Mansa's quest and break down the castle wall. To do this, you have to use three of the gold pieces and then break down the castle wall. Make sure you hold on to the last three of the gold pieces, because we'll need that to finish Focanelli's quest in the Land of the Warriors. Now we can come back to the Land of Contemplation, and there are a few keys that we can get here now. First you need to accept one of the quests that require you to kill a raven. Once you accept that, we can move on to the bench on the side, and just by clicking on the bench, you will prompt a cutscene, and you'll be able to kill the yellow mage. Once you kill him, you'll get a key from that. After this you can go to the map on the far right and you'll be able to find the raven. You can kill the raven and you'll get a key from that as well. Before moving back to the land of innocence, I recommend killing a few rampikes, which are the little snow tree things, and get 9 branches. You'll need that for a quest later in this dungeon. In the land of innocence, keep doing Tina's quest until she gives you a storybook. You'll have to do things like collect and buy a book from the shopkeeper. She'll give you her storybook and that will give you a key when you double click it in your inventory. Before going to finish off Billy's quest, make sure you click on the cookies in front of Tina and choose the option to make it rain. Make sure you don't complete any more of Tina's or Riley's quests, otherwise it will stop raining, because we'll need it to be raining to complete another part of the quest. From here you can finish off Billy's quest and send him back to the land of contemplation, and there will be an extra quest for you to plant some trees around, and all you need to do is to drop the rampike branches on the spots indicated, and you'll need to drop them one at a time. You'll need three branches for each of the trees, so nine total. After that, go back to the land of the warriors and eat three of the gold pieces and then talk to Volcanelli. She'll give you a key and then prompt you to turn it back today. Turn it back today and then head off to the land of riches again. First off, talk to Mansa and he'll give you a key. Then go to inside the castle and click on the sack on the top right. After talking to the sack, you'll be able to interact with the two NPCs left inside the castles, Horem and Louis. And after going through their dialogue, head off to the portal on the far left of the map. You'll find Guy with some tombstones around him. Talk to him and finish his quest by breaking the rocks on the far right side of the map and then giving that to him. He'll tell you to come back in 10 minutes to complete the quest. After that, go back to the Land of the Warriors and you'll be able to interact with the statue. After talking to some of the NPCs, 
Click back on the statue and go through the cutscene. The statue would have thrown the spear that it was holding at the Land of the Riches. Go back to the Land of the Riches and talk to the NPCs to get another key. Once that's done, go to the portal on the far left again and wait out the 10 minutes. Once the 10 minutes is over, you'll be able to talk to him again and you'll actually be able to customize what color of tombstone you'll have for the rest of the game. I personally chose gold because I think it's the most obvious change out of all the colors. He will also give you a key. And once you're done, leave the map and then go back in. It will change the scenery of that stage and after talking to the NPC again and then doing a short quest, you'll be able to get the 12th and last key. You can go back to the map with the large door by talking to the Akasha tree and you'll be able to open all 12 of the locks. After that, you'll be able to go back to where you were before you start the dungeon and you'll have in your inventory all four totems. And with that, that's the end of what I wanted to cover in this episode. Sorry that it's a bit of a more boring episode because it's basically just a Afterlands walkthrough, but I think it's a necessary damage gain if we don't have access to the U-Garden totems, which is something that a lot of people don't want to grind for. The Afterlands theme dungeon is actually not a bad alternative to leveling. It will save us spending time grinding at various maps from level 80 to 90. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.